Hello everyone, welcome back. I've been meaning to put a list together for a long time now about 10 films that everyone should watch. It's taken me a while to comprise the list but I've finally done it and so I'm going to run through each film now. I'm just going to give it like a brief rundown of each one and uh, I promise you every single film on this list is well worth your time and effort. A lot of effort has gone into making this and every single one is a strong film that I think everybody should watch. Every film on this list I consider to be like a work of art. Okay. Um, there, are some, there are some obvious ones on here, some films that you see on a lot of lists, but there are also some that you might not see coming as well, that you might not predict. I am going to be reading from notes here, by the way, because uh, I've talked about 10 films and I've got to uh, give you a brief rundown of each one. And, and these are in no particular order either. No order at all. I've, it'd be too hard for me to put these in order, to be honest, because I love each and every one of them so much. So, number one on this list is American Psycho a film from the year 2000 with uh, Christian Bale. To me, th this film goes beyond horror. It, it's terrifying, it is horror, but it goes beyond that. It, it's actually a satire of, of 1980s yuppies in New York. Brett Easton Ellis, I think he noticed that a lot of these businessmen in New York were living like rock star lifestyles. And the whole thing's like a big satire of that. It's like drawing attention to the mindset of it, what these people had. And uh, it's, it's a work of art. It's, um, it, the, the main character, Bateman, as well, Patrick Bateman. I've, I've watched this film countless times and, and I still don't fully understand Patrick Bateman as a character. And I see that as a good thing. That, that's a sign of good writing, in my opinion. It, it means that the character is very deep and complex. There's a lot to know about the character. And the, the ending is great as well. I, the, at the ending, he, he, nothing is solved. Um, he, said it, he says something like, this confession means absolutely nothing. And I, I think that's good as well. I, I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of happy endings. It, that, Sometimes, there's a time and a place for them, but not always. The ending to this film is great as well. It's a work of art, and you need to see it at least once in your lifetime, right? So that's number one. Number two on the list is maybe a predictable one. The Silence of the Lambs. This is a film from the early 90s. It's, it's a story that's extremely well written. Uh, Thomas Harris wrote the story. It's also very well cast as well, which is also always important. Jodie Foster plays a great part. Anthony Hopkins plays a brilliant part. And uh, Buffalo Bill, he, he was well cast as well. Um, and this one, it, there's, a, there's a great escape in this film as well. I, I love the way that Hannibal Lecter escapes from his cage in, in that building. I think that's work of genius and it's it's filmed very well there's some very good camera work in this film I, I watched this a few weeks ago and I noticed that there's a lot of full-on facial shots where where the actors look directly into the camera you notice it a lot with Hannibal Lecter when he's speaking from his cell he looks straight at the camera so does Clarice Starling when she's talking to him a lot of full-on camera shots Jack Crawford does it in his office, he looks straight at the camera. Uh, it happens again when she takes the, the moths to those like nerdy characters in the lab. One of them looks straight into the camera. And Buffalo Bill, when he opens his front door, he looks straight in the camera. Next time you watch this film, look out for those camera shots. The actors look straight into the camera, it happens so much. And it works, so, uh, so that's number two. Number three on this list, you might not predict, it's a film called Cape Fear. 
and I'm talking about the Robert De Niro remake from the 90s. This, the theme tune alone for this film makes it, in my opinion. It, it's, it's one of the most iconic theme tunes I've ever heard. It's, it's terrifying. There's creative camera work in this film. When he's, when he's kind of attacking that woman in the bed, it's filmed from above like a bird's eye view. Right at the beginning of, of the film, when he's released from prison, Robert De Niro, he, he seems to walk straight into the camera lens as well. I don't know if you noticed that. It's like he's walking straight into you, into the camera. That's good. And there are a few more examples as well, but it, it's, it's filmed in a very different way, which we, in a good way. Uh, and, the, and the good guy in this film is, is guilty as well. It's not a kind of cheesy story where the, with a good guy and a bad guy. The good guy, the family man, played by Nick Nolte, he, he's a flawed character. He did something wrong as well. He, he's a lawyer and he didn't do his job properly. And that makes the film real for me as well. Uh, because in real life, you don't get goodies and baddies. Everybody is a mixture of good and bad. And I think that adds to the quality of this one. Go and watch Cape Fear. It's, it's a work of art as well. Number four, Natural Born Killers. I did a video of this a little while back. Without exaggerating, I think this is the most artistically filmed movie I've ever seen. It is packed full of subliminal clips. It goes from black and white to colour. Loads of stills. Uh, I think I heard somewhere that it took 11 months to edit this film, and I believe that. I think most films take about three or four months to edit. This one took 11 because there's so much stuff in it. The soundtrack is, is incredible. Um, it feels like a dream when you watch it. And it's still relevant as well. That's the main thing. The, the main message of this film is the relationship between the media and serial killers. How they kind of turn them into these celebrities. And... I think that's still very relevant today, you know, uh, so, but, but it's, this film seems to be largely forgotten about, I, I don't really hear anybody talking about it that much, which is a shame. Go and watch it, T take my word for it, it's worth watching at least once, I, I've, I've continued to watch it, I've watched it about three times in the last few weeks. Um, Number five, I won't say too much about this one because it's an obvious one. Pulp Fiction. This is just like an iconic film. It's, it's iconic. The, the whole concept of the timeline being mixed up and so you, you see the end at the beginning, the beginning at the end. That's brilliant. Nobody did that before, I don't think. Um, Tarantino, he, he had a unique vision and a unique style of that movie. Uh, nobody else is quite like him in that sense, and, and it's timeless as well. The film is absolutely timeless. I, I think if nobody knew about Pulp Fiction and they released it today, and people saw it for the first time, it would still hold up. I think it's, it's that good. It's raining outside, I don't know if you can hear it, I hope not. Uh, right, moving on to number six. This is a very special film for me. A Clockwork Orange. For me, this is like the ultimate cult film. It's... Where do I start? The, Alex DeLarge, the main character, he, he's like... He's like a charming psychopath, I've heard somebody describe him as, which is true. Uh, he's... <laughs> he's likeable, almost, even though he's, he's a complete arsehole. You see the story through his eyes, and he narrates the film, which I think is good. So you're following the story from the bad guy. And uh, it's, it's like you've got, the, you've got a theme of free will, of course. The film is about free will. It's about mind control, and it's about government control, how powerful the government should be. So you've got all that going on. But I think the main strength of this film is the fact that it manages to be both 
terrifying and hilarious at exactly the same time. For the, the, main, the best example of that is the rape scene where they break into that couple's house and he's singing, singing in the rain while he's raping them and beating them up. I mean, that, that is terrifying and, and funny at the same time. Not many films have managed to pull that off. Not, not that I know of, anyway. So, uh, there you go. Clockwork Orange is number six. At number seven, I've got Fight Club. Fight Club, in my opinion, is like a modern masterpiece. It's like a, a study and a critique of uh, modern consumerism and the modern nine to five rat race. It's, again, it's a timeless film. It's very creatively filmed. You've got these, these clips where Tyler pops up and then disappears. You've got all these shaky camera angles. Uh, the, the soundtrack is excellent. The soundtrack is completely brilliant, uh, anti-establishment, um, and, and it, this one was also my introduction to uh, Chuck Paul and Nick's work, <laughs> whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, you might have seen some of my book reviews of his, but I, I, I didn't know that it was even based on a book until uh, a couple of years after I watched the film. And it introduced me to the work of Chuck, Paul and Nick, and that, that kind of led me down another rabbit hole. So um, this is a special film for me, and I think it, it's, it's timeless as well. I think in another 10 or 20 years' time, it will still hold up. So Fight Club is definitely on this list. Uh, the next one, we're on number eight. You might not see this one coming, but I think it definitely deserves a place on this list, and that is The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think this, was, this, this came out in 1987 and this film is, is terrifying because of its possible vision of the future. It, it, the film was actually set in 2017, you know, or 2018. But uh, society has collapsed, the economy has collapsed, everything's gone to pot and the government has to constantly distract the populace by uh, broadcasting this horrific game show where people get killed for entertainment all right it, it's a terrifying story uh, the theme tune is excellent I love the theme tune and the soundtrack it's well cast Arnie plays a great part I, I think it's his best film um, and the man who plays Killian the game show host kind of makes the film as well that's good. And it also captures the 1980s perfectly. I watched this the other night as well, and as soon as I turned it on, I, I was just seeing the 1980s. It, it's like a time capsule of the 1980s, like big shoulder pads and stuff like that. And um, it, it's actually based on a book as well, this one. Stephen King, he, he published a book called The Running Man. He published it under a pseudonym, Richard Bachman. The book is very different to the film, actually. Um, in the book, you don't get this big game show arena. The, the runners are running around the streets. They just use the street. There's no, there's no big uh, arena like that. And, and also, what else is different? K Killian, the game show host, is black. And also, big spoiler coming up, switch off now if you're going to read the book. At the end of the book, uh, the main character, um, Ben Richards, he hijacks a plane and flies it into the headquarters building, like a 9-11 attack. The book and the film are good, so check both of them out actually. Number nine on this list is a predictable one, but it, it has to be on here because it, in my opinion it's possibly the best film ever made best film of all time, Apocalypse Now. I don't usually go for war films, but I'm, I certainly make an exception with this one. This, this film to me is, is also like a dream. It, it, it's weird, it's a war film, but it's, it's, it's like a dreamscape as well. Uh, the theme tune is incredible. I love these little eerie 
sound like these little eerie songs you hear while Willard is reading his paperwork on the boat, like a little like flute music. It really sets the scene. It's a form of escapism. Um, the, the temple scenes at the end. There, there are some beautiful shots there. It it's really is a work of art. Um, there are several layers to the film as well. There's, there's some secret meanings in there. I don't think I entirely agree with Francis Coppola's uh, political opinions, by the way. That this film is very anti-West, very anti-American. Um, and I, I don't think I totally agree with him. That the Vietnam War is very complex, but um, putting that aside, the, the film is a masterpiece uh, and everybody should see it at least once in their life. So go out and watch Apocalypse Now. Number 10 on this list is, I think, the newest film on the list. It, this was from uh, 2014, I think, and it's Nightcrawler with Jake Gyllenhaal. I watched this for the first time a couple of months ago and I was completely blown away. It's, it highlights the kind of ruthless nature of the news media. It, it introduces you to this world where these, these cameramen go out and film people literally minutes after they've had a car crash and then the footage gets sold to these news corporations, news channels and they just broadcast it on TV. You see these injured people lying in the road. It's like a, it's like a savage industry that I didn't even know existed, really. Um, and that the main character is both a hero and a villain at the same time, which is good. He, you can't help but admire him. He's determined and motivated and intelligent in a kind of autistic way. But at the same time, he's, he's despicable. Um, and the, the, the film delivers a kind of harsh truth to you that um, in real life, nice guys finish last. If you want to get to the top, especially in the business world, you've got to be ruthless. And, and this film captures that perfectly. And there's some very nice cityscapes in there as well. And so there you go. Ten films. Are, you, I genuinely think you should watch these films at least once. All, all ten of them are works of art in their own way. And I think they're well worth your time and effort. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that list. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you want to check out my own work, I've left some links below in the description box. Um, keep your eyes peeled for another video from me in another two weeks or so. In the meantime, try to have a great day on this movie-obsessed, Hollywood-obsessed rock we call Earth. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.